Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play the Final Fantasy Legend. In the last part, we started off the game and made it here to the Bandit's Cave, and now we're gonna fight some lizards. Uh, each one of these lizard NPCs in the cave, by the way, holds one to three lizard fights, or one to three lizards. Uh, lizards have 40 HP and they're weak to ice, so if you have any ice attacks, uh, go ahead and use it. Uh, they have a bite attack, which doesn't do too much, and otherwise they're fairly vanilla. Oh yeah, that's actually a thing I should mention. Uh, this is the first time we've seen it, I think. Uh, random battles in this game can have more enemies than they show. I think the most enemies you can show on screen at once is three, but each of those is technically a group of enemies, even if it's just a group of one. Uh, I think you can have up to like, I think the highest I've seen in the game is five in a single group. But that's nothing too bad. At least at that point in the game. By the way, I recommend saving because we're coming up on the first mini-boss. WHO SAID YOU CAN ENTER?! I did. Forget about the girl. NO WAY! And the bandit ends up being a P-Frog, the first mini-boss in the game. It's technically a normal enemy, I think, later in the game, even. Uh, poison frogs here have 82 HP, they're still weak to ice, but they have a P-Skin ability. Uh, uh, he just used it right there. Uh, more or less, if he decides to use P-Skin that turn, uh, if you physically attack him, you'll get poisoned. It's fairly standard, and poison in this game doesn't last that long, so you don't have to really worry about it. But it could potentially be annoying. However, we want to get this guy's meat for our first transformation. And we want to give that to Kaneda for an Oni. Spammy! You should have said that before I murdered your face. Either way, let's take a look at that Oni. And by the way, I got ESP. It's more or less useless. It's horrible. <laughs> I think it's supposed to, like, increase your invade or something, but it's not worth it, really. Either way, the Oni only has two attacks, Nail and Horn. Horn is the more powerful of two attacks, but Nail's the one you'll be using more accurately. It has decent strength for this point in the game, so it's not too horrible, but there it's more or less just a step one monster. Well, step two, technically. And next up, we're merely thrown into our next battle against an Albatross. Which is actually the monster we had to start. Uh, 20 HP, it's immune to Quake, and it has Beak. It's the exact same monster we have. But it's overall a very weak monster. And we do not want to eat its meat. Yeah, that's actually the thing. Uh, you might think that the monsters we get is slightly different than the ones that we fight. But no, they are the exact same creature, just the fact that we have control over them. And there we get a potion, which is pretty simple. You get three of them for every single one. A strength potion, which increases strength, and a Red Bull. <laughs> Actually, that kind of makes sense. Either way, Red Bull has 60 HP, it's weak to ice, and it has a pretty decently strong horn attack at this point in the game. Uh, we actually do want to get this thing's meat, but I forgot about that until later. Uh, because the way I have my notes laid out is that I don't have meat to get in order kind of laid out. I just have... If I'm in an area where I need to get meat, I say it there, and I have it later, usually. And a shield. Shields are a bit different. First off, they're not armor. They don't increase your defense by equipping them. Uh, what they do is that they go into an equipment slot, that, and you use them in battle to increase your invade instead of your... Well, not your invade, your uh, agility, I think, rather. Something that's not your defense. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention the last part exactly... Well, first off, I, what I just did there was I constantly saved and, re and soft reset by pressing A, B, start, and select to get the best boost I could have could have gotten out of that strength potion, which is five. And now we're back at the girl's village. But yeah, agility is more or less this game's god stat. Uh, it influences both damage for your agility weapons and hit percentages, but it also increases your evade in turn order. Or determines it, rather. Thank you very much. You've made me happy. And now we go back to King Ama. Uh, strength influences strength weapons, which are usually like swords and the, and the like. And the hit percentage for firearms, which we'll see later on. Uh, one thing I actually just realized I forgot to mention is that when an enemy has an elemental weakness, if you hit them with it, it's more or less an instant kill. Uh, usually is, at least. Uh, I think it's because, like, the spells are bugged or something. Thank you. Thank you. We're glad we could help, but we still are entitled to a reward. Mm-hmm. What do you desire? Well, we would like the armor. I see. And we get the king armor, which isn't just a key item, it's actually equipable. 
Uh, it has better defense than the gold armor, so I'm gonna equip that on, I think, Lucy. But uh, keep the gold armor around because we're only gonna have the king armor for a fairly short time. Either way, that is one out of the three hero items, so next up, you wanna go after your king's sword because king shield is kinda being a dick. But first, I do wanna head back to town and use uh, some of the money I got to buy an HP 200 potion for Callista. Uh, the way HP potions work is that, like I mentioned last part, they increase your HP of a human, or the inc or increase the HP of a human, from anywhere between 5 and 20. Up to their number, that is. Since it's an HP 200 potion, it'll only increase integers of 5 to 20 until you reach 200 plus HP. At that point, it'll only increase your HP by 1 for every single one you buy. That's so that you can't just buy a fairly inexpensive HP potion and just spam it to get up to 999 really quickly. Oh, and random little thing. I actually do have the Strength and Agility Potion formula on standby. It's more or less random uh, but times 20 divided by current stat plus 2. So, in other words, once your stat exceeds 20, you'll always gain 2 per potion. I think that's actually somewhere on GameFAQs. I think that's where I found it because during my research phase for this game. Because I actually went through a decent amount of research, all things considered, compared to my normal LPs. Not as much as I do for, like, the main Final Fantasies or when I get to a Chrono Trigger, but still. Either way, as one person said in the Hero Town last part, uh, the King, uh, the Sword Castle is in the Southwest Mountains. So, you just want to walk along this path. Admittedly, this game's encounter, you might, you're seeing it here, this game's encounter rate is very undecisive about what it wants to be. Sometimes it's really high, sometimes it is super low. But it does lead into our next encounter, Skeletons. 20 HP that are undead, so they're weak to fire. Uh, they have a bone attack, but they are protected from both weapon and paralysis in a para. Yet again, I'll get into what para is later, but protection from weapon more or less means he takes less damage from weapons like swords and such. A lot of uh, skeleton type enemies have that. Uh, but Sword Castle is actually very small. It's only three floors. But one thing I want to do on this floor is look around for a Red Bull enemy, the one we fought earlier, to get some meat. But first off, I'm going to fight a fly, which is thankfully not Jeff Goldblum. Uh, flies have 20 HP and they're weak to ice. That's all about. That's about it for them. They get 40 gold, but a lot of the enemies at this point do. I do not. How does a skeleton have meat? Um, yeah, either way, I, I was pointing at it earlier. I didn't talk about it because I was looking away from the screen, but I got ice earlier. And like I mentioned before, by the way, this is when I grind for the uh, Red Bull meat. Uh, as I was saying before, uh, the natural ice spell, you can replenish it in, obviously. But the difference is from it in an ice book is that while an ice book does have more charges, it's more powerful to compensate by the, for the fact that you cannot, uh, what's it called, replenish it on your own without buying another one. Either way, the Red Bull meat, we want to give to Envy to turn him into a slime. Slimes are actually one of my favorite lines of monsters. Uh, this one in particular is weak to fire, but it and but it's also protected from weapons, which means it takes less damage from them, and pair, or par. Uh, I mentioned par last part. Protection from par more or less means it's immune to most status ailments. And Melt is a very good attack. Uh, what it essentially does is, is that it's a defense-piercing attack that dissolves HP from the enemy and gives it back to you. It's a draining, more or less. So, and because of that, even though it's... Uh, the, the one bad thing about the slime, at least, is that its defense is really pitiful. But honestly, I forget if I do it here or not, but if you want to, it's very... Uh, yeah, I do do it. Uh, having a, a slime near the front position, even if it's just like the second, is honestly a very good idea because of the fact it can drain HP and give it to itself. So yeah, slime monster's pretty good. By the way, I recommend saving before this fight, because this can get kind of dangerous. You must defeat me first if you want my sword. Okay, that'll be easy. Uh, King's sword has 130 HP, and it's hum and that's about it. It drops 240 gil, and it only has the King's sword for an attack. Now, that's like, actually, that's a nice little detail there. It actually ha uses the weapon he's going to give us as a weapon. Nothing too dangerous, though. Uh, an ice spell should kill it very quickly, like four turns, not even, should take it down. But we get the King Sword, which, like with the King Armor, is an actual weapon we can use. However, since it's a strength-based weapon, I always recommend giving it to the humans, if you have one. I recommend, I always have a female human due to the higher agility, base agility. But if you have a male one, yeah, give it to him as well. But now that we have two out of three items, we better check back with King Shield to see if he'll actually, you know, talk to us this time. 
Also, I show it off here, but I got some new abilities. Barrier is the only one that's really useful because that ups your entire team's defense by 10, I think, for that turn. Electro does something to the enemy's defense, I think. The king is... Ooh. Dead. Mm-hmm. Mm, how nice. You've arrived just in time. And now I can frame you for the king's murder. And he throws another new enemy at us. An Asagaru, or how the hell that's pronounced. Asagaru has 20 HP and uses a katana. That's about it. 40 gold, so yet again, that's pretty normal for this point. It's a fairly standard enemy. But yeah, Melt is really good. Uh, you'll be seeing slime-type monsters throughout most of this playthrough, so get used to seeing them. Alas! But yeah, let's go after that steward. Now, I wonder why they had the secret passage in the first place. All righty there, there you are. Hey, come back here. Wait, do you want money? I'll give you anything, even the shield. By killing you. The steward has 20 HP and can use a gun against us, but honestly, he should die first turn almost no matter what. You're scum. You make me sick. And we get the king shield. Yet again, I don't like shield, so I'm not going to use it. There's only... Oh, well, first off, he's dead. This game's pretty blunt. Uh, there's only one shield in the game I'd even consider using it, and that's the final one that we don't get until the last part, so yeah. Either way, we want to go place those three items onto the statue, but I do recommend, before doing that, doing what I'm doing, in fact, you have to do this, and replace your king armor with the gold armor that you should have kept, and just take the king sword off of your human. And with that, we're good. Let's head on in. Let's put that on. Also, save. Call the hunch. Something's missing from this statue. Like the king armor, shield, and sword that I forgot to take off accidentally. Uh, feasibly speaking, you could come back here at any point and just put these things on uh, sequentially, but I just like to do it all at once. And for that, we get the Black Sphere, which is when we need to enter the tower. What the? Turtle! Here's another who has the 30 items. So people have done this besides me? By the way, first major boss in the game is Genbu. 250 HP, Tusk, Gas, and Shell, which is the, one of those I think is a poisoning move, and Shell just increases his defense. And he's immune to poison and para. So, if you have any poison attacks for some reason, don't use them. But really, if you stay all out, if you go all out with, like, Melt, Horn, if, you ha if you're following me as a guy, that is, you probably have these exact same uh, monsters. He'll go down in, like, two or three turns. He's nothing too hard. Though, fun fact, the major bosses in this game, Genbu here in particular is the first one we'll see, are actually based off something from Chinese mythology that people might remember from Beyblade. He is based off the black tortoise or turtle from the four symbols of the Chinese constellations. We'll be seeing more of those as we go, though. Don't think it's over. And he just died. That's pretty quick. And you'll see me... Ch I, I, I eventually start editing out, I believe. But after every battle, I do recommend checking and saving uh, your mutant progress. Either way, uh, I left because we were done there for then. But you're going to notice I changed around my inventory a bit. And uh, stuff. I bought an ice book just so I could have one on the standby. And I ditched the bows and bought two hammers uh, for Callista. Although I only have one equipped right now because inventory limits and I like to just have one on at a time. Doors locked by the magic of black. And if you're wondering how you break that since we have the black sphere, go all the way down to the bottom of the very limited inventory and use the black sphere. And with that, we can now enter the tower. The seal is broken. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching. And in part three, we're starting our trek through the... Game Long Tower. See you guys then.